Okay, so the book really tries to do three things. Uh, first, it's telling the story of a story. It's looking at one particular story that originated in the Middle Ages and is trying to come to terms with it. Second, it's telling the story of the reception of that story, how that story was rediscovered in the late 19th century and then how it was passed on from researchers to creative artists and how it went from one medium to another. And then the third angle to the book is setting the story of the story, the story of its reception within what was happening to medieval revivalism in culture, especially Western culture, between the 1870s and the present day, with a strong focus on what was happening in the United States. The story is very simple, but it's also uh, very rich, and so I don't think uh, anyone who has, any two people who've told it have told it in the same way. But here goes, I'll give it a try. There's an entertainer. He's a kind of dancer or an acrobat. And he is actually fairly successful in the world at doing his routines. But he's finding himself feeling empty, unsatisfied by all of it. So he happens to see monks and to enter a monastery. He decides that he's going to become a monk and devote his life to God. So he gives up his horse, his clothing, all his money, and goes into the, the monastery. When he's inside, not long passes before a kind of despair, even a depression, settles upon him because he realizes Unlike the other monks, he doesn't know Latin. He cannot sing the psalms. He doesn't know the forms of worship. He, he doesn't know the monastic sign language. He doesn't know when to be quiet, when he can talk. And so he's really at a loss about how he can give of himself. And then he finds out once that down in the crypt, there's a statue of the Virgin. And so what he starts doing is to slip down to that space beneath whenever his fellow monks are in the choir singing the, the church office. Eight times a day, they have to go through a specific cycle of uh, hymns and, and uh, liturgy. And while they're doing that, he goes down there, and what does he do? He performs something that's a lot like the floor routine of a gymnast by uh, dancing around, in, in performing these complicated moves. And he does that the whole time that they're up above singing and chanting. And um, so he's doing this eight times a day. And the other monks notice that he's absent, and so two of them take it upon themselves to follow him and to find out what he's up to. And so they go down and they are just horrified. They find this the height of blasphemy, the idea that you would worship by doing a kind of uh, breakdance routine in front of the, a, a statue by yourself, an improvised uh, liturgy. So they bustle off and they grab the abbot and they bring the abbot to see what's going on. And at first the abbot also is horrified, but then as they're watching, they see that at the end of doing this floor routine, that uh, when the, the, the lay brother collapses on the, on the ground in exhaustion, that Mary appears. Either the statue becomes animate or Mary comes down somehow as an apparition from heaven. But either way, she's there and she does something to console him. She uh, daubs the sweat from his head with the fringe of her veil, or she fans him with 
uh, a, a piece of her clothing like a handkerchief. Or in some of the vers versions, she drops a flower beside him. He doesn't see her. He doesn't know that this, is, that, that this has happened. But the other monks see what's, what's happened. And they realize that after all, he's holy. And it was encountering, the story goes on from there, but I'll stop, but it was encountering that for the first time that uh, really had a magnetic effect on me. Nothing would make me happier than magically to be able to find out that a hundred years from now, I had been able to contribute to the continued life of the, of the story and my hope for the book and then even more for the exhibition related to it is that they will afford people encountering them with many, many opportunities to come to understandings of their own and perhaps to develop those understandings and to share them in conversation with others. If we had more of that going on now, we'd be in a much better world than